is Mental Health Monday, which means it's time for our weekly check in. I'll check in. I'll check in. Yes, I am your fabulous, radiant, vibrant, magical host, Radiant Goddess Susie, um, of the Divine Empowerment Podcast. And today I want to discuss confidence and mental health. You know, and how this world does not want you to be confident in your mental health. Otherwise, they wouldn't call it a disorder. They wouldn't call it an illness. They wouldn't try to get you doped up on medication. They want you to continue to be depressed and stressed and anxious and fearful. Because confidence means not only are you confident in yourself and your ability and that mental health does not define you it means that you're confident in God too you're confident in your divine identity because regardless to what society wants you to believe God told me to tell you that that mental health challenge that mental health exceptionality is actually your greatest gift. It's your superpower. It is how you light up this world. It's it is the thing that makes you you, that makes you unique and beautiful in you. But society has allowed us to believe that there's something wrong with us that we need to be fixed because we experience moments of sadness because sometimes we feel a little depressed because sometimes when people are attempting to manipulate and control and abuse us psychologically sometimes we react to that so they want to make you seem like there's something wrong with you you need to be fixed you need to be medicated when that's the furthest thing from the truth and self love is a huge part of confidence because when you love yourself you are aware of what triggers your anxiety, your depression, your sadness, your stress. And you do your best to eliminate that from your life. You know, a lot of the times the stress, the anxiety may come from addiction. You know, and I want to tell y'all a story. You know, I just did a, I just did a addictions and mental health last week and I want to say Friday night I had a passenger and he gave me some Delta 10 gummies right CBD now I haven't had CBD in over 10 months and I was like you know what sure I want to I haven't had one I really did enjoy the gummies um, because they did help me to relax they helped me to sleep I like the cycle the psychedelic factor of them because um you know a lot of times my dreams are off the chain you know I haven't had any dreams lately you know to write in my dream journal so yeah let me try it and you know while those aspects of it are still true it sent my anxiety through the roof and I was paranoid and I don't like that feeling at all you know, and I'm thankful for that little experiment because it's just showing me that, no, I don't want this because I didn't feel my authentic self. I wasn't even as bubbly as I normally am. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't, I wasn't as talkative. It, it kind of like, it just, it just was inauthentic to me. And so I'm thankful for that now because it's like, no, I don't need any kind of medication anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because that stuff is not authentic to me. And I think that a lot of the times, people who experience depression and all that other stuff is because 
the majority of them are medicated and I, I don't know if they're if it's um you know like prescribed medication or if it's just like you know drugs and alcohol but and I said this in the the other podcast you know like you really do have to get to the point where and I'm not tell, I don't want anybody to think that I'm telling people to go off their meds because that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is you have to get to the point in your journey, right? And this is a part of self-love where you are okay with not being on medication, you know? And so, like, even even me with the... Because with, I was using the CBD as medication, right? Um, but you kind of got to wean yourself off of it. Like, you have to have it in moderation. And I think, really, with a lot of the drugs that we have today, you know it's kind of like a crutch right so they tell you oh this is good for your depression and so every time you feel depressed you feel like you need to take a, a medicine right you need to take a pill you need to pop a pill when a lot of the times you really do need to work through those feelings you know and I realize it's harder for some than others and so this is why I'm saying like don't go off of your meds but I would encourage you to really like have control over not taking a pill or not having a drink or not smoking a cigarette or not hitting a blunt or whatever it is you do when you're feeling depressed right because a lot of times it sends us down in a down, downward spiral and so what I'm suggesting is that you actually when a depression comes up that you actually feel through it like allow yourself to feel through it without those things you know, it's a lot easier, I think. Well, and I don't want to say easier because there are some people that are genuinely addicted to drugs and alcohol and feel like they can't they can't let it go, right? Like if they let it go, it wouldn't be they wouldn't be themselves or I don't know really what 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 the thought process is um you know, or if they let it go, then they're probably going to feel worse than they already do. I don't know, but what the thought process is, but you know, in my own personal life, you know, I kind of had to, there were some things I was able to quit cold turkey, right? There were some things that I was just able to quit cold turkey. And then a lot of things is I had to like really wean myself off of them. And so like, you know, I would find myself kind of going back until I no longer wanted to go back, you know, and that's true for a lot of my relationships too. You know, like sometimes you have to go back to realize, you know what? I no, mm -mm, this is not for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, nope, absolutely not. Um, and then other times you just be like, mm -mm, this this was never for me, you know, and you stay away for good. Um, but you know, that's how I had to do it. You know, so I'm thankful for that experience and and having those gummies. And so yeah, I ended up throwing the other ones away um, because I didn't like how it made me feel. You know, yeah, it knocked me out, gave me a great sleep. And then when I got up, because I got up in between it, right? So, like, I took it about midnight, maybe, no, a little bit before midnight. And then went to sleep. And then I ended up getting up at, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I just was not myself, you know. So, um, so yeah, I guess if I take it to sleep. But, see then I was saying like yeah I, I could take it to sleep or whatever but no I don't want to be dependent on it for sleep because like my thing is like once you get dependent on something then you become addicted to it right and I don't want to be addicted to anything else like you know just like realizing like you know I would be talking to my passengers and like you know how I used to drink and stuff and it's just like you know drinking right now it does not it don't it don't even mesh with my body you know what i'm saying because like i said before i would start burping up egg smells so that has to be something internal that's going on you know what i'm saying when alcohol hits a certain part of my system it just i don't know what happens but it's nasty and i don't like it so i don't drink no more you know smoking oh my goodness when i smell smoke now oh my goodness it's like oh I can't stand it. It's like, you know what? I used to smell like that. I used to smell like that because I used to smoke a pack and a half a day. You know, and this is why I say, like, this is why I stay single. And I know people probably going to be in my comments or whatever, but what I want don't exist. 
it doesn't exist and at this point in my journey I'm not settling I'm not settling for close enough almost enough no I want a man that's sober minded meaning he has let all of his addictions go right he has let them all go just the way I have you know I want a man who shares the same similar morals and values you know like um I can remember my children's father becoming like it just irritated the fuck out of him when our kids would smack their food you know I can remember this one time when we had Zaxby's for dinner right and we used to get the wings and things and my son his hands was covered in barbecue sauce and ranch he was sitting up there enjoying his food and smacking and and my children's father became upset it upsets him when you smack it absolutely upsets him why i have no idea maybe maybe it upset his his caregivers when he smacked right and so you know i think my son i love my kids because they really do stand up for themselves you know and i really do but think think my son one time was like you know like um well in asia they see it as a compliment or something like that and then you know of course he was uh my children's father was like well we're not in asia so stop smacking or something like that and it's just like let them kids enjoy their food and like ask yourself why does it bother you like why does it bother you and why do you consider that rude or for some that mean that somebody don't have no manners or you know like if you tell your daughter that then that's not how a lady is supposed to eat her food like why i mean i know today it's it's psychological abuse right because it's it's a need for an imperfect person to have perfect children to have a perfect spouse to have a perfect life i i recognize that now but you know the thing is is that it bothers psychological abusers when you're confident in who you are it bothers them you know why because they're not confident in who they are and a lot of psychological abusers deal with mental health challenges and deal with mental health exceptionality but because they never felt good enough because they never felt accepted in their skin they want to change you too right because they want you to be accepted and to be loved like they weren't so they think they're doing the right thing right but it's like let me be me because this is how i thrive but they don't understand that because they're still trying to you know change fix well they're not even trying to fix themselves what they're trying to do is change everybody else to to be like them or to think like them or, you know and it's just like um when you're confident in your mental health exceptionalities or who you are right like you know what i'm saying like you just eat you just smacking you don't care i'm enjoying my food <laughs> they don't like it's like your confidence is like a direct threat to them because the thing is is that they see they when they look at you you're like a mirror and we all know what mirrors do right mirrors have this tendency of reflecting back to us who we are on the inside so when we look in the mirror and we see death or we see ugliness or we see not good enough or we whatever it is that we see we think that that's who we are right and a lot of psychological abusers they can't appreciate you and your confidence because they want it they want what you have because they haven't learned how to cultivate that within themselves, right? 
and they don't see you as a person that could possibly teach them right to be confident in who they are you know and that's why it's so important for us to teach our children self-love and to be confident in who they are right and to not tie their self-esteem and their self-worth to the opinions and the value you know the the opinions and projections of others because a lot of the times people are just projecting their own insecurities and like you have to be able to be in relationship with people who not only value you you know but that value your confidence and see your confidence as something that can help them along in their journey right but psychological abusers are in competition with everybody like they see everybody as their competition right and you have a confidence they want to break that they want to break that out of you because they don't have the confidence so if if if, if they don't have it then you can't have it it's kind of like their thought process right and if y'all don't believe me look at the psychological abusers in our society like in our government you know they don't want you to have it but they they damn sure want it you know they'll they'll try to stop you from having it but they're gonna have it they're gonna take it and that's that's really how psychological abusers think you know what i'm saying so you know and it's kind of like a smack in their face like how dare you be confident in your mental health challenges and your mental health exceptionalities and i can't be that i can't get there because i i care too much about what people think about me i care too much if people see that i struggle with this what are people going to think about me because they they tie their self-esteem to to what other people think about them because they're not confident godfident in who they are because they haven't tapped into their god identity and realize baby your mental health challenge your mental health exceptionality is actually your greatest gift it's actually the thing that enhances your gifts you know once you become self-aware but because they see this distorted version of themselves in the mirror they won't go and and love themselves and become more self-aware because they're deathly afraid of that right because they already see this distorted view i'm not good enough i'm broken i'm damaged i'm ugly i'm this i'm that whatever they may be thinking about themselves right so they already have this distorted perception of themselves so they're going to have a distorted perception of you as well and they're deathly afraid of looking at themselves the way that God sees them because how could God love someone like me I'm this I'm that I'm the other and so you know you really do have to go and love yourself and become confident and know that no matter what anybody else says about me God loves me God adores me God cherishes me just as I am even with my mental health challenge even with my mental health exceptionality because you know what I'm not harming anybody in the process with it you know I, I said this on another podcast I'm comfortable when I'm crazy and let me be crazy you know what I'm saying because all I want to do is sing and dance out loud pack the food that's it I don't want to harm anybody you know um you know people will call you crazy let them Oh, I was going to say confidence is crazy. Yes, it is. Confidence is so crazy because the world wants you to be like them. The world wants you to be like this person. Why can't you be more like this person? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. No, the world wants to control you. Psychological abusers want to control you. So, yeah, when you're confident in who you are and they can't control you, that pisses them off. Pisses them off. And I was saying the other day, that that really and truly is your greatest power. Confidence. Because when they start their shit, (laughs) when they start doing their shit and it don't get to you, man, the 
effect that you have on them. The effect, right? Yeah. Because they still haven't recognized their power. See, because once they recognize their power, they won't do the, the, the dumb shit that they do. They just won't. You know? When you recognize your power, you realize, I never needed to try to have power and control over anybody. I can just love people as they are. And if someone is attempting to harm me, I can love that person from a distance. I don't have to have them in my sphere of influence. I don't have to allow them into my life. I don't even have to talk to them. You know? Yeah, confidence is crazy. It's crazy to be confident in your mental health challenge when everybody else wants you to be down in the dumps and feel sorry for yourself and all that other shit, right? So, you gotta be, you gotta be crazy to have confidence. You really and truly do because knowing that your mental challenge, your mental exceptionality, it does not define you. It doesn't. It never has. Society wanted to define you. Society wanted to say, oh, you have this disorder. Oh, you have this illness. Oh, poor baby. No, I don't. I have a challenge. I have an exceptionality. I got a challenge that I need to overcome every single day. And I'm confident that I can do it. You know, and I didn't tell y'all this, but taking that CBD, you know, it didn't cause depression, but it caused anxiety and all that other stuff. And I was like, I don't want to feel like this, you know, because I have gotten to the point in my journey where I know that when I'm having a, when I'm experiencing a depressed episode or depression episode, it's because I'm thinking about a past that doesn't exist anymore, right? I'm going somewhere that I really shouldn't be going. And so now, you know, it's like, uh uh-uh. We're not even going there. Like, that is so over. That is so yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's enjoy today. Everything is taken care of for today. So let's enjoy today. Let's enjoy this moment. You know? And just really recognizing your triggers. And that's why it's so important for you to become self-aware. And not allow your mental challenge or your mental exceptionality to define you. And being confident in it, regardless of what it may be. And learning to control yourself and not attempting to control other people. Because that's not confidence. If you need to control somebody else, it's definitely not confidence. And I don't care if it is your child. You don't need to control your child. You just need to be an inspiration and a guide. But allow your child to be a child. Allow them to smack. Allow them to pick out their own outfits. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they feel comfortable in. I know a lot of people will judge my daughter because she wears a lot of black and say, oh, she's she must be, be depressed. Actually, she's not. Actually, she's very comfortable in telling you how she feels. I'm thankful she wears black because it 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 deflects negative energy. Now in the summertime I do be you know I do try to make suggestions but she don't she like no I want to wear without I like this. I'm not hot and if I am let me be hot. Okay. All right. You know? Let them figure out You've had you've had your your chance. You can't go back and 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 try to live your your children's life. You gotta allow them to live their own lives. And you really need to be an inspiration. You shouldn't be talking about what somebody else needs to do or what what they need to stop doing when you got a lot of bad habits your damn self. <laughs> It's so easy for you to tell somebody else what the hell they shouldn't do or uh, what's rude or what's unacceptable 
But you don't look at yourself like that, though, do you? Like, oh, my smoking is unacceptable. I need to let this habit go. Or, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, uh-uh, because I can, I can see it in you better than I can see it in myself. Or I ain't even going to try to recognize it in myself because I'm going to judge you about yours. <laughs> but yeah man it's you know you got to be confident you really and truly do because this this world wants you to, to not be confident it wants you it wants you to stay in depression to stay in fear you know that's why the prices are going up and up and up because it keeps y'all in fear keeps us in fear you know keeps you a slave to the system because if prices going up that means you can't quit your job and start your business or venture out prices going up shit i gotta go get me another job forget just having one job i gotta go work multiple jobs to even be able to survive keeps you a slave to the system we're all slaves some of us recognize it and some of us don't. But when you're confident in who you are, you don't live your life in fear. You don't allow fear to control you. To control your actions. You know? You stand firm. You stand firm in who you are who you are divinely because God loves you just as you are society told you not to like yourself God told you to love yourself like he loves you society doesn't want you to like yourself that's why they tell you you got a disorder that's why they tell you you got an illness because they don't want you to like yourself they don't want you to love yourself because if you love yourself you're not easily manipulated easily controlled I got for y'all today be confident in who you are be confident in your mental health challenges you know like I'm in this in a couple of groups on Facebook and you know so like one person posted I forget what the post did but it was just basically like you know they're having there this is going on this is going on and I just said you know what it's okay to not be okay we all struggle right like I think that we end up beating ourselves up more when we're because we're trying to be this perfect person right we're oh no i shouldn't have these depressed thoughts oh no i shouldn't be sad oh yes you it's a part of who you are you're a positive and a negative person you have positive aspects you have negative aspects that doesn't make you anything less you just need to get around people who appreciate you and that accept you for who you are. That's all. People who are not trying to change you into their ideal. So people who just genuinely love you for being you. Now, a lot of times we experience depression because we're around people who constantly tell us that we need to change or that they don't like us, that they genuinely don't even like us, right? And we're trying to get somebody to like us. <laughs> because we like that person. But that person doesn't like us. Get from around somebody who don't like you. Who don't even want to be your friend. Like, get from around that person. I think that was the best thing that I ever learned. Was be friends with people who genuinely want to be your friend. And I ain't talking about Facebook friends. You know, because a lot of people on my Facebook ain't even my real friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got people from high school on there that ain't genuinely my friend. You know what I'm saying? So, like, get yourself around people who want to be your friend you know as much as you want to be their friend don't try to fit into spaces to 
for people to like you. Because there are people who are going to love you with your mental exceptionality. There are. They're going to appreciate you. They're going to accept you. And they're going to love you. You know why? Because they already doing that for themselves. Right? Just like I learned, like, you know, I'll stay single until I can be with somebody who's, who knows how to take care of themselves. You know? Because when you take care of yourself, you're going to take care of another person. You are. But, you know, if you're harming your own body, if you're filling your body with toxins and other unhealthy things, you're not going to take care of yourself. You're not going to take care of nobody else, right? Or you're going to try to pour all of that stuff into somebody else, right? I can take care of them, but I can't take care of myself, but you're genuinely not. Take care of your whole entire self, everything about you. Learn to love your whole entire self, everything about you. And that's that. Then and only then is when you can do it for somebody else. Then and only then is when you stop trying to change other people into your ideal or make them into what you want them to be, what you think they should be, and you just start loving them for them. So um, that's all I got for y'all today. But I thank each and every one of you for joining me. It doesn't matter if you are a seasoned listener or if you just just so happen to stumble upon the divine empowerment podcast today thank you i thank you for being here i'm thankful and grateful for you whether you stop by to listen uh whether you're a listener supporter whether you're a podcast subscriber or a youtube subscriber i thank y'all so very much but if this is your first time listening please let me know if you are listening on amazon anchor apple breaker google podcast pocket cast radio public spotify or youtube I want to hear from y'all. Let me know what part of the uh, region you guys are joining from and uh, where you're listening to me at. Um, I would really love the interaction. Um, And feel free to like, comment, and share anything that I post. Um, That support is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed the episode, I invite you to become a YouTube subscriber. It is absolutely free, right? Because a lot of the stuff I do, it does cost. But wherever I'm able to offer free ads, I want to do that. That's why I decided to not be on Patreon and just continue to do the um, the podcast episodes for free. Um, and then continue to upload them to YouTube. Um, because I'm doing some other things that do cost. So, um, But if you are interested... And providing monthly support to the mission of, and purpose of A Mother's Touch, Inc., then I invite you to become a podcast subscriber or a listener supporter, or you can sow a monthly financial seed of love into the mission and purpose of A Mother's Touch, Inc. via Cash App, which is the dollar sign, A Mother's Touch, Inc., PayPal, which is A Mother's Touch, Inc., at gmail.com, or Venmo, which is the at symbol, Ayana Suttles. All acts of love, kindness, support, and generosity are greatly appreciated and accepted. And all financial support fulfills the mission and purpose of A Mother's Touch, Inc., which is to provide single mothers with the assistance, support, and guidance they need for the well-being of their mental health. You know, what I learned is when I am mentally healthy, I feel more confident in myself. You know, I feel more confident in my ability to succeed after psychological abuse. And so, you know... I don't discriminate when it comes to mentoring, but A Mother's Touch, Inc. really was created out of a desire to be the mentor and organization that I needed on my journey when I found myself struggling in every area of my life after leaving behind the psychological abuse of my past, you know. Um, and, and, and that really is who I desire to pour into as single mothers, you know, because I know how hard it is to, to, to try to balance, you know, our emotional health, our mental health, our spiritual health, and still take care of our kids. You know what I'm saying? And I know how hard it is living on a single person income and just really needing some type of assistance. You know, I said before, I'm thankful to the Greensboro Urban Ministry for paying my light bill a couple of times. I'm grateful and thankful for all the people that I was able to get food from. I'm thankful and grateful today for, you know, the people who are assisting me currently on my journey, you know, not financially, but really just being lenient and helping me to really get back, you know, to where I desire to be. So I'm thankful for everybody that supports 
and assist me along on my journey um, because those are the type of people that I continue want to be connected to, you know, because they really do have your best interest at heart and that's love for me. Um, but yeah, but um, if you are a single mom who's interested in receiving supportive resources and encouragement on your journey of self-love and healing, then I invite you to join a Mother's Touch Inc. single mother empowerment community on Facebook. Um, you know, I'm thinking about doing like lives, but you'll receive encouraging posts, free downloads, product discounts, a monthly self-care newsletter, and so much more. You know, I got so many ideas about this group, um, but it's free to join. The link is in the description box below. And that's all I got for y'all today. I love y'all and I thank y'all for joining me. But you know, before I let you go, I have to send a prayer of love out to the love of my life. The universe. So let's go ahead and do that. Dear universe, I love you. I love you with every fiber of my being. Every part of me screams your name. I love you. It's a privilege and an honor to serve. It's a privilege and an honor to love you, to be adored by you, to be loved by you. And I thank you for taking care of me. And I just ask that you do the same for every person who took care of me today and stopped by this podcast to listen. You know, because they supported me I'm asking you to bless them with an extra special blessing of abundance and prosperity any any place that they feel that they may be lacking in their lives I pray that you would bless them abundantly in that area I pray that they will open up their hearts to receive and accept your love for them that they can be confident in your love for them and confident they are in your eyes regardless of our struggles how much you truly love and adore us how you want the best for us and how just how you love us so much how you love us it is like none other like no other love and I'm thankful and grateful that you would just shower them with your healing energy your protective energy let them know that they are always protected that they don't have anything to fear that we truly don't that this life is nothing more than an illusion and that we really do need to tap into who we are divinely and step in our power and step in our power and become confident in our divinity because we really are and truly gods and goddesses. You live, breathe, and have your way in us. We are guided by your spirit every day of our lives, whether we recognize that connection or not. And for us to just truly get connected to you in every way possible. I'm so thankful and grateful to be a vessel, to share my story, to share my light and my love with everyone who I encounter in this vehicle with everyone who listens to this podcast. It truly is a privilege and an honor to serve in this capacity, in every capacity that I serve others. I don't take it for granted, and I love you, and I thank you for this gift. And with that being said, let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. So be it and so it is. Amen, amen, and amen. I thank y'all for joining me today. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste. And if you are watching on YouTube, click the next video.